my story. I mean, oh. Well.
Hello. Hello. Hi, Brian. Took me a little bit to get in the Zoom Hello. this morning. I had to try three times. <laughs> All right. Let me. Um, let's get this thing started. So it's three minutes after the hour, and I'm already, and I was the late one. Um, so let me go ahead and share the agenda. All right, so it is March 18th, 2020, and this is the CNCF SIGAP delivery uh, bi-weekly meeting. Just a little bit of a reminder, this is recorded and it is public. Do not say anything that you don't want to be judged about later. All right, so um, we actually do not have a large agenda today, but I would like to welcome any new members. Uh, anyone want to in introduce themselves? Sure. Um, let me start, everyone. Um, so my name is Fran Mendez. I am the, the founder of the Async KPI specification and the Async KPI initiative. I'm not sure if you've heard about it, but uh, and I was joining here today just to um, just to familiarize on how you guys work. Um, and yeah, I'm happy to help on anything that uh, uh, that you might need. And and yeah, you will see me very often, uh, I guess. Thanks. Well, hello and welcome. Anyone else? Yeah, uh, this is Pushank. Um He's still talking. Yeah, I'll quickly go and probably can go next. So um, this is Hoshank. I'm from Dell and uh, really thankful to Uma uh, for helping out us in terms of organizing Hacktober Fest. Uh, at Dell, they came in and gave a really good session on Litmus. Uh, and I've been following the Litmus since then. So really thankful to Uma for inviting me here. And uh, really nice to meet you all. All right, welcome. All Hi. right, anyone Hi, else? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> this is Kiran here. Uh, I am the maintainer of the OpenABS project. Just saw that Litmus was added onto the agenda, so joined this call and we'll try to be more regular here. Thanks. Yes, uh, well, welcome. Yeah, we're going to do, uh, as part of the agenda, an agenda today, there will be a presentation by Litmus Chaos. I was going to talk about that in a little bit. Yeah, so welcome. Anyone else? All right. Uh, yes, I, oh. so my name is okay. Wenson. Mm -hmm. Hi, sorry, I think the internet's not fantastic uh, from home. Um, my name is Wenson. I uh, work in Springer Nature as a platform engineer. So our organization recently joined um, CNCF. So I'm new in this meeting. Welcome. Thank you. All right, last chance. Okay. Hey, uh, so, my name is Ashok. Oh. Uh, hi, hi. Um, I'm from Wipro and uh, we use Litmus for some of our Kubernetes workloads for chaos experiments. And I also have a Govindan Guti, uh, my team member, also joined in this call. Oh, OK. Welcome. Thank you. All right. I'm going to assume that there is no one else. And so the next item on our agenda is an update on the AirGapt workgroup. Um, uh, Jeremy, or is anyone here to send an update? Any updates? All right, well, they do not appear to be here and the, the leaders of that work group. So I will ping them offline to, to get us an update. Uh, so next up is an operator work group update. Jared, are you here? Yeah, yeah. Hey, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay. 
Mm -hmm. I think that's physically. There we go. Yep, I, I, I clicked my mute button. Um, so uh, so the charter is is I think forming up pretty nicely. Uh, we haven't had a chance yet to actually meet. I think um, we intended to set up a doodle and then then everyone's starting to work from home through a wrench into it. Um, uh, I think we're at this point the remaining uh parts of like our goals and our non-goals we really just need to figure out in that call and then hopefully in in two weeks we'll be able to send that charter back for for a vote on it or, or ready to present it here uh you're muted so did you push the meeting out a week so it'll happen next week we uh, haven't we haven't set, set up the 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 doodle we pinged a lois and um our chris hind did and um and so just waiting on a response there. I can add it, um, but I guess I guess uh, we weren't sure where to go from here on setting that meeting up. Yeah, so um, I think that meeting was supposed to happen yesterday, right? If I'm thinking correctly. I know no. I had a conflict. Not that I know. If it wasn't. Oh, okay. Well, I will. I will ping. I will figure out when we need to have this and or when it's going to happen, and we'll make sure that um, folks know. All right. Next up on our list is Litmus Chaos, and they're going to do a presentation. Yes, hi, uh, this is Uma, uh, one of the maintainers of uh, uh, Litmus Chaos project. And uh, can I go ahead and share my screen, Brian? Yes, please do. All right. Hopefully you could see. Um, first of all, yeah, I just wanted to give a little bit of uh, background uh, on this project and where we are with the process. Um, last uh, meeting I checked here and they said, yeah, you follow the new sandbox proposal um, a process and then uh, create an issue and a PR. Uh, so we did create uh, uh, an issue first and then um, this is the issue. Uh, in TOC issues, and then um, Amy asked me to create a PR as well. So we created a PR, and Chris has suggested uh, uh, we should uh, do a review uh, at uh, this SIG. Um, so I'm here. Uh, thank you for uh, taking your time uh, to listen to this presentation. So what I'm planning to do here is uh, I did present um, to this group uh, back in October, uh, a very general introduction uh, of the project uh, when it was newly formed, but uh, now I have a little bit more detailed presentation as per uh, the details required in the process. Um, one question even before I start doing this is, um, we present and I know it's going to be recorded, and then would there be, um, so what would be the next step in general uh, for the TOC? I, I should go and present uh, to the TOC or uh, do we wait for a few more meetings to happen? In general, I'm, uh, I'm just wondering, Brian. Yes, yeah, so what will happen is after this, um, we'll take this conversation offline, but uh, this is for, um, for Sandbox. So um, we will, we will actually, we will contact you. Um, there's a little questionnaire that we like people to fill out and, and we'll get that to you, Uma. I, um, sure. what you'll, what I'll do is get your email and, mm -hmm. and then we'll get it started from there. All right. Perfect. Thank you, Brian. So with that, uh, let me start. Um, so Litmus Chaos, uh, the project itself, uh, is to, uh, provide an infrastructure to do cloud native chaos engineering. I'll just uh, talk about uh, in a bit what is uh, cloud native chaos engineering. So a bit of background and history is <clears throat> this project was, um, you know, it's not new. It's been there about uh, almost two and a half years now. We announced it in 2018 KubeCon as an open source project for Kubernetes. And uh, since then, it's been uh, majorly sponsored by my data, but uh, recently we are seeing more vendors uh, contributing to it. And that's one of the reasons why we'd want uh, to present here, right? And originally, it started as a chaos engineering framework for OpenABS. Kiran is in the call, he's the code maintainer of the project. Um, we were trying to do uh, chaos engineering for OpenABS, and we did not really see a proper tool that is really cloud native, and we started writing it um, on, on our own. 
then soon upon this could be useful for a lot of other applications in the Kubernetes environment. And then we started actually uh, creating it as a project and here we are. Um, it's been in production um, for OpenEBS CI for the last two years. Uh, what it means is um, a litmus uh, chaos has been continuously um, being used for uh, the various negative uh, chaos testing uh, for OpenEBS.ci uh, uh, platform. Uh, it's well cooked and uh, a lot of feedback that's, that has come in. And uh, sometime around uh, last year, um, mid, uh, there were feedback that uh, it's not really easy to use uh, Litmus. Uh, you had to you know, Ansible and then the regular stuff. So what the community and the team, what we did is uh, let's actually create chaos CRDs and uh, create application specific chaos charts, uh, similar to Helm charts. And then we start putting them on chaos hub. And then uh, we really saw a lot of other uh, community members uh, picking it and using it uh, for their own applications. And um, that's, that's really the start of the community growth, I would say. And then right now we have uh, full-fledged charts for Kubernetes and OpenEBS and uh, decent charts for CodeNS Kafka, and then a lot more are coming. And uh, in terms of the project status, uh, we have achieved 1.0 um, general availability a couple of months ago. The latest release is uh, 1.2 and 1.3 is in progress. And it's completely uh, Apache 2 licensed. I'll share later the details of uh, the POSA check complaints and everything. So that's the background. And uh, this project itself is not new to CNCF. Um, so, uh, immediately after starting it, and there was a chaos engineering work group that was started uh, by Chris, and we presented uh, on 7-24 um, uh, July last year, before year. And uh, then uh, once we got more uh, feedback from the community about the CRDs, we defined the general principles for cloud native chaos engineering, and we published that on CNCF blog platform itself. Uh, that blog uh, receives a lot of visitors uh, in terms of finding how to do chaos engineering for Kubernetes in general. Uh, it's not like super specific to uh, Litmus alone, but in general, what do you need uh, to do chaos engineering in a Kubernetes native way or however you do for other applications. And then uh, once the project uh, has re received a recent and uh, decent progress and also Chaos Hub was ready, uh, we presented here um, to the app delivery sake on in sometime in October. Um, and then we really saw uh, more charts coming in and uh, we also had the intention to um, provide Litmus as a chaos stage for CNCF CI itself. Uh, so we did present uh, into that work group, the CI work group of CNCF um, earlier this year. And uh, we also now have created, um, one of the team members of Litmus created a PR uh, to introduce the chaos stage into code DNS pipeline. And once we go through that, uh, there will be a uh, definite um, uh, progress towards uh, doing the same for other projects in CNCFCI. So uh, we've been here and then of course uh, last uh, week we were here as well just to talk about that. And uh, looking at our community, um, the community is uh, uh, reasonably big, I would say. We got about six, 30 stars and we've been contributing in um, October fest, so there were a lot of small contributions that received from all over the world, uh, but uh, majorly, I would say uh, there are about uh, 40 to 50 um, contributors and many of the contributors are coming from the following companies. Uh, Wipro, Intuit, uh, and as uh, my data, the primary sponsors, and we have a fully uh, committed team, about uh, 10 plus people uh, contributing to Litmus. And then um, we've been running from the experience of running open business project, uh, we've been running a monthly community calls and then there are multiple people joining and it's a, a organic growth that we are witnessing. And we are part of uh, Kubernetes Slack channel, uh, Litmus, and uh, there are quite good uh, 
conversations that happen there and that's the website and uh, twitter is reasonably active and in terms of primary users i will listed a few who have uh, got uh, legal clearance from their side to say that they are using uh, litmus publicly away pro and zebrium or the two other companies in my data of course uh, we have our commercial uh, products uh, uh, where we use litmus for chaos testing and then of course open ebs which is a cncf uh, project uh, which is using litmus and the genesis of litmus is really attributed towards uh, open EPS. Then I have uh, two other very big companies that are using uh, Litmus for their general needs. Uh, they're also part of the CNCF ecosystem, but um, I would need to wait for their approval to display. Uh, but I'm pretty excited about uh, their contributions uh, to the community going forward and in general to the Litmus Chaos project. Uh, with that, I would want to really uh, give a top level feature list. Um, primarily what Litmus Chaos is, it's an infrastructure. Um, we, it's not just about a few ways to inject chaos, but uh, in order to do chaos engineering, you need a lot of things. Uh, you need to primarily do it through the regular and proven DevOps practices way or through GitOps, right? So you need to have uh, uh, well-defined CRDs and uh, you need to know, um, you need to have a chaos operator and then application specific uh, chaos experiments. And that's what it is. And then to do chaos engineering, you also need to have very good monitoring and being able to schedule this chaos uh, in a way that uh, falls in into your uh, CD or um, practices of DevOps. So you need a chaos scheduler. So those are also in progress. So as you can see, it is actually a real infrastructure for chaos engineering and parts of them are chaos experiments. And uh, we are actually very proud to say that uh, we have a hub, uh, very similar to operator hub or CNCF hub that's coming up, um, where we pull together um, the chaos experiments. The whole idea, which I'll talk later in the presentation is, the whole idea is, to have readily available um, chaos experiments for all the applications or most of the applications on Kubernetes environment. And that's probably why I think uh, we are very much applicable for this C group because uh, you name an application and you need to deliver that onto your CD or in upgrades delivery. Uh, you need to have chaos uh, engineering as part of the process. So you could use Litmus for that. And then uh, we, I'm proud to say that we have about uh, 12 experiments, uh, including the one that went out uh, yesterday or a couple of days ago. Uh, it's a fully featured chaos experiment for native Kubernetes. Uh, you could almost uh, in inject chaos into any of the Kubernetes uh, resources. And there are a lot of um, application specific chaos experiments, for example, OpenEBS, CodeDNS, and, uh, and more. Um, and the other major feature is as part of the design goal, we did not want to um, be the monopoly in a way you do chaos. Um, so for example, this is how you kill a pod. This is how you kill a node. So we didn't want to explicitly say that use Litmus and do it this way. Rather, we wanted to give it as application <coughs> um, pluggable chaos, or if you know a way um, to kill a particular resource and you have been using it and you just need uh, a chaos engineering infrastructure to do your chaos, you can use Litmus. Um, that means the chaos should be pluggable into this infrastructure. And we have well-defined examples here. Uh, for example, Pumba is reasonably known for injecting network latencies. And uh, we uh, wrapped up uh, Pumba as a plugin into Litmus. And Powerful Seal is another um, uh, well-known chaos framework uh, uh, by Bloomberg, and it's been integrated into Litmus. And Chaos Toolkit, uh, one of, uh, I think it's recently merged uh, into uh, Litmus, where Intuit was using Chaos Toolkit for, for about 10 years, and um, they found uh, Litmus uh, as 
one of uh, a good ways to inject chaos in a cloud native way. So they put a wrapper on top of it uh, using our plugins, and then uh, now they're using a litmus. And in fact, uh, now they are one of the core maintainers of the project itself. So this is really the summary of it: applicate uh, pluggability hub and uh, a very generic. Uh, operator-based uh, framework to manage the lifecycle of chaos itself. <clears throat> and let me talk about um, the architecture itself. Um, so the architecture uh, here, uh, I just want to uh, simplify a little bit. So at the install time, you have a chaos operator and an exporter and scheduler uh, to do the basic job of chaos, chaos lifecycle as well as to uh, monitor what exactly has happened and then uh, scheduler to actually schedule chaos uh, at the required interval. So these are the chaos components and uh, primarily we install some chaos schemas, uh, the CRDs, and then the actual experiments will be listed on a hub, just like a Helm chart. And uh, you can pull in, uh, right now we have about uh, 20, 25 experiments, but uh, we expect this to go into hundreds. Um, so you need not want all those applications, uh, the custom resources all the time. Uh, so you can pull whenever you want. And uh, at the runtime, uh, you use one of this uh, CR and uh, the CR gets, uh, is being watched by the operator and the controller and a chaos runner is started. Chaos runner uh, through a chaos library will actually inject chaos into a given Kubernetes resource. So it's a loosely coupled, well-defined chaos framework, uh, but it does the job of end-to-end -end chaos engineering. And this is at a very high level. And why do we call uh, chaos, litmus chaos and cloud native? Right, that's because the entire uh, chaos management uh, happens through an operator. Uh, we are using the operator framework um, uh, that's uh, reasonably popular, I would say, uh, but it can be rewritten using other operator frameworks as well. And uh, for example, Kudo. <laughs> um, but uh, it has got a complete lifecycle um, um, manageability right now. And then the entire chaos can be managed through declarative YAMLs. Um, so you can uh, use your existing GitOps uh, model and uh, DevOps uh, infrastructure and uh, inject chaos and actually do it as a process through all the declarative YAMLs. Um, and then the chaos runner, which is the job that uh, manages chaos when it is uh, in the process of injecting chaos itself runs in a container and can survive no tributes right one of the reasons uh, or the definitions of cloud native is um, it should be highly scalable and highly available so what if the guy who's injecting chaos that node itself goes down and what happens to the management of uh, the chaos so because it runs in a container and being orchestrated by the operator and Kubernetes in general, uh, it survives no reboots and then the chaos management continues. So that's why it's uh, cloud native. And the other one is pluggability. The entire cloud native ecosystem can use this infrastructure, not necessarily uh, litmus core libraries. Um, so you can, and examples that I talked about are uh, Pumba, Powerful Seal, and Chaos Toolkit. Uh, any chaos logic that you have, if it is in the form of a Docker image, uh, you can actually uh, put it into the litmus framework. So that's why we think our, uh, it's completely uh, cloud native. And uh, how can litmus chaos, this is one of the other questions that, uh, that was asked in, in the proposal uh, for the sandbox. Uh, how do you uh, think your project uh, can be used by other CNC projects? Well, um, Litmus Chaos itself is a Kubernetes app and it provides, as I described in the previous slide, uh, a well-defined uh, YAML declarative uh, APIs. So uh, all you need to do is uh, use the CR Chaos Engine and uh, define your experiments. So any project that is on running on Kubernetes can use um, Litmus so for their own Chaos Engine needs. So it's actually a very easy fit and a well um, it's a perfect fit, I would say. So uh, now, next I want to talk about developer experience with Litmus, as well as the SRE or admin experience. 
So as a developer, how would you use Litmus Chaos and how does this entire infrastructure work? So you have uh, an application that is under development and you are a cloud native developer and you're in general developing uh, some uh, Kubernetes uh, micro services, right? Uh, for example, an application pod and a service that uh, manages that uh, application pods. And then because it is Kubernetes environment, uh, you're not uh, you're getting a lot of other microservices being available, which are part of the CNCF landscape, and uh, you will be constantly interacting with those other microservices as well. So, for example, the quality or resilience of your application is also dependent on the quality and resilience of these microservices, which are being managed by somebody else, but you're 100% dependent on that. So what you do in general um, to build the resiliency or the quality guidelines, so you build a pipeline and uh, functional, it's, it's uh, up to the developer, uh, but we are now talking about uh, chaos or negative testing, right? So you need to include negative scenarios for your application. It need not be about your application or your services alone, but it may be something that, hey, my SQL goes down. How does my application behave? So you need to actually kill um, my SQL, uh, which is the database underneath, and then see how, uh, how it uh, behaves, your application behaves. So you need to have uh, a lot of ways or experiments to inject chaos into the other applications. And that's where Chaos Hub comes into the picture. You need not write these ones, they're already available. Um, so you just select them and pull them in and they're available into your pipeline. And then the results are already available. And of course, for you, uh, whatever the application that you are writing, uh, application specific chaos of your application, you need to write. So you develop them and then as a good Samaritan, uh, you can actually uh, push those chaos experiments back onto the hub. So what happens is uh, once you build this CA pipeline is all done, your product is uh, reliable now, you think, and then you ship it out. And the users now have a way to test resiliency of your application. And it could be another developer who's using your application as a part of your the green box here, or it could be the SRE that is using your application. So they could use um, the test that you developed during your development. Um, they could use those chaos tests in production later on to do chaos engineering. So that's the idea of bringing the developers and SREs together and work them in tandem in an open way, in a Kubernetes native way to do chaos engineering and increase the reliability or the entire delivery of the application into production. So what about SRE? Um, SRE, um, it's actually pretty simple. Um, we expect when Chaos Hub is well developed, you will have chaos experiments for most of the applications. So you have uh, all those application experiments out there on the hub. You just need to pull those CRs and uh, tune those CRs and schedule um, the chaos engine CRs uh, so that uh, the chaos experiments are run and you observe the resiliency metrics, you take appropriate decision to improve the resiliency or tune the configuration of your application or the cluster or the hardware or whatever, right? So it becomes almost like uh, from a challenging experiment to a seamless experiment uh, with this infrastructure and the hub. Um, so what is this chaos hub? How does it look? Um, so let me show you that. So chaos hub, this itself was, uh, I mean, we wrote this as a fork of operator hub um, because it's open source and Apache too. Um, so uh, we have about uh, 11 experiments for Kubernetes uh, resources. Uh, these are the charts or experiments that you can use. So you can almost kill uh, any type of, um, you can inject any type of chaos that you need and uh, memory hog, you know, CPU hog are um, the recent ones that, uh, that we have introduced. And uh, for example, pod network latency, uh, underneath we use Pumba, right? It's uh, some other chaos library and uh, using the pluggable mechanism, uh, it works well. And similarly, uh, let me show uh, upcoming charts. And those are some of the charts. And um, there are some in staging, for example, Elasticsearch, 
Longhorn, which is another storage engine, MongoDB, MySQL. Uh, many of them are coming, and uh, we are hoping with the introduction of um, uh, a neutral governance to this project, more and more CNCF projects will actually submit their chaos charts on the hub, and uh, it becomes more usable and uh, friendly to and driven by uh, a larger community on this idea, right? With that, I just want to do a very quick demo uh, of what I just talked about. And as you can see that I have a WordPress server, uh, which is using um, a MySQL database. And intentionally we put one, one replica. So they're not like highly resilient. So when you kill something, the application will just back up. And uh, Litmus generates a lot of Kubernetes events for every chaos option, action. It's very important to know what happened and uh, who's killing what uh, type of thing. So I'll be looking at uh, Kubernetes events while I do this um, uh, killing. Let me just go back. Uh, so I have uh, a WordPress application. Uh, let me refresh it. It's slide and uh, and uh, I have uh, pods, a uh, namespace called SIGDEMO, and uh, I have WordPress running, and uh, MySQL and WordPress, um, they are a single pod with the two containers in it. It's been running for about uh, uh, two hours, and uh, I have no events uh, here. And let me actually uh, install Litmus. So right now there is no Litmus at all on this. Um, so through a simple operator ML, I'm going to install Litmus. Let me move this aside. Okay, and uh, let me see if uh, the CRDs are installed. Yes, they are. And uh, let me see what are the pods running. Um, you have the operator, and uh, that's very much enough for us. And uh, now I'm going to pull some experiments onto this cluster. So I pulled the generic chart, so I got a lot of experiments into this. And let me see what are the CRs that are installed. Right, uh, just now installed. So next is security, and uh, I have an our back um, policies that are set up already into um, this YAML file. Uh, it basically says that uh, a given person has uh, access uh, to inject chaos. So I'm going to apply those our backs. And primarily before injecting chaos, I just want to uh, show you what is the, to inject a chaos, you need to create a, a chaos engine CR. And uh, the spec really says that which is the app and which namespace and uh, some annotations, and then what are the experiments that you're going to do. So I'm going to do a pod delete uh, of uh, an application whose app label is given above. And then uh, I, I'm going to do uh, a total of 10 second chaos at the interval of 10 seconds. That means one time I'm going to do a pod kill. So with that, uh, I'm actually going to inject chaos. So once I do that, as you can, you can see that in that namespace, the chaos container will come up and uh, start. Um, chaos runner is now running. Um, you can see that there's an event that said things are uh, happening here within related to chaos. And then uh, the actual chaos that kills uh, or this experiment pod delete itself is running inside a container. And that's what I meant by cloud native. And in about uh, 30, 40 seconds, you will actually see uh, once the pre-checks are done, um, the chaos injection is happening. And you can see that the termination of uh, MySQL is happening. And uh, now we should not be able to uh, see this uh, WordPress app uh, being responsive. Um, it's not. Yep. 
So it went down, but we expect um, it to come back and uh, the entire stateful application and then the stateless application recovery happens. Um, the containers are still fully not up. As you can see that Litmus is really waiting. It's, it's not just the job of uh, injecting chaos, but also the job of making sure that what is the resiliency of the application? And I know once the pod is up, uh, I need to wait for the service to be uh, available and et cetera. So uh, as you can see that because the uh, WordPress uh, is looking for database, it's continuously going for crashing and Litmus is really waiting for it to come back. And after some time, if it doesn't come back, then there is a problem with your application. So it will um, exit the threshold and say that there is a problem with your application. If the pod goes down, your application is totally going down. Um, so in about 10 to 15 seconds, it should recover. If not, Litmus will say that the application um, has an issue or the experiment has failed. So um, while we wait for it, uh, I think it's come back up and uh, you will see that uh, the post check of Litmus says that uh, everything worked well and uh, the IoT is uh, running uh, successfully and uh, we're now going to delete uh, the chaos, uh, whatever we introduce new, new resources, everything is done and we are back to normal, right? And uh, let me show the result as well um, here. Result is another beautiful thing. It's also CR and you can use this uh, to collect Prometheus metrics and doing other sorts of uh, Kubernetes stuff uh, with the result. And uh, now let me actually go back. It should come back up. Yep, it's all good, and uh, we have a chaos page as well. So in this case, the experiment um, succeeded, and the application also is working well. So that's the way you define uh, or test your resilience using uh, Litmus. So that's the demo part, and uh, just to summarize, in this uh, few minutes, I'm able to actually uh, define um, my test and pull the test case and run it right, all in this live demo. So it's very easy to install. Once you install, you get the operator libraries, you pull the charts and you create a CR and to inject chaos. And then that runs the chaos inside a container uh, in a cloud native way. And then the result is a CR and then you can use it. So that's, that's about it. That's how simple it has become from being very, very complex um, process of chaos engineering. So why do we think um, this project uh, should be governed by CNCF or why do we want to donate this? Uh, well, the idea itself is uh, it should be useful for a lot of other projects. And um, that's why we open sourced it and we architected in a way uh, that Kubernetes applications can easily use it. And uh, most of the Kubernetes applications, or CNCF applications or, or projects are Kubernetes centric. So it is a very natural fit. And uh, just like Operator Hub, Helm Hub, uh, we have Chaos Hub. So it's a proven way for the CNCF community uh, to use uh, a Litmus as part of their application delivery. And uh, we believe if it's part of uh, Sandbox and later on in the ecosystem, and the hub itself will grow faster and uh, the community will, will embrace it much faster. And most of all, we want it to be uh, a vendor neutral home uh, for this project um, because it's not just my data. Um, there are two other or three other very big companies that are part of um, uh, the contributors. So we think it is now time for finding a vendor neutral home for this project. So uh, there are a lot of other details that we put together uh, as part of the sandbox process, um, including uh, the FOSA checks and uh, governance, thanks to Kiran for helping us uh, with the many of them. And uh, for example, we have uh, uh, adopters list as well, uh, who are using uh, as uh, in big uh, companies as well as individual users. And uh, we also have an ETE for uh, Litmus. So, so it's a well-defined platform uh, of CACD to deliver this uh, before we actually uh, goes out. Um, so it's uh, based on GitLab. We followed very similar 
uh, infrastructure to the Dubsy and CFCI, uh, but uh, it has got a well-defined uh, CA and E2E platform as well. So with that, um, I would say thank you for giving us an opportunity to present here. I'm very happy to answer any of the questions. All right, thank you, Uma. Uh, so before we get started, there's two questions from the chat and I'll read them both. And just, um, we wanna keep this part pretty, um, fairly short, but I still wanna give a chance that people ask questions, but um, what is the distribution method for these chaos charts? Um, is it using OS OCI or um, we should rope the chaos hub into the discussions um, that we've been having? I guess there's another conversation going on about hubs and um, that was the, right. that was a, Yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, right now, uh, the hub is nothing but, uh, I mean, because we were not part of CNCF hub, we created a hub, uh, right? And uh, uh, if you want to create uh, a new experiment and you want to give it out, you need to create a CR spec and then just put it out there. Uh, we expect uh, this hub will be merged uh, into CNCF hub. For example, users come in, I need an operator for my application, so go get it from the hub. I need a chaos experiment for my hub, go get it. I need actually an installation spec. So go get it, a uh, helm chart from there, for example, right? So we expect that there will be uh, a common hub uh, where chaos is uh, a very generic um, delivery method. I hope that answers your question. All right, and then there's one more question. It says, have you seen, and is there any value in using customized to customize experiments coming from from the chaos hub to a particular environment. Yes. So I guess the, the question is, um, how do I adjust the experiment before uh, applying it to my environment? Right. Um, yes, it is totally customizable um, already. And uh, in fact, there is a value in having already customized uh, experiment uh, in the hub. It's not just about uh, doing a pod kill. For example, uh, what I showed right now in the demo is I killed a pod that belonged to my SQL, right? That is Kubernetes generic. And then the post check of the chaos experiment just generally went and checked, hey, is my MySQL pod came up and running, right? That's all I could do. But if you have an application specific chaos experiment for MySQL, uh, MySQL itself, then the post check of that experiment will go and talk the language of the application itself. And that's again, totally tunable, right? You can actually go on very uh, various parameters. And that's the whole idea of uh, creating the hub where you will have uh, application <laughs> specific post checks and pre checks after you inject chaos. Um, so that, um, that probably answered uh, that question. Uh, if not, um, yeah, I can take uh, detailed questions on the community. All right, are there any more questions? Okay, then. All right, well, thank you, Uma, for, for um, this presentation today. Um, I sent you a message on Slack already. I just need to get some information for you. So sure. just go ahead and answer, answer that and we'll get the process and, and we'll work with you on the process of, of getting into the sandbox. Thank you. Um, yes. So uh, that's actually the end of our agenda today. Yes, yes it is the end of our agenda today. So our next week is, our next meeting is in two weeks. Um, that would be what, April 1st? And uh, I guess I'll see you then. Yep, that's correct. All Thanks, right. Everyone. All right. Good Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.